Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to Hilo. For those of you who haven't been to Hilo, this is um, our literary cafe, and you're currently in the listening room, which is intended for spoken word, uh, poetry readings, book signings, artist talks, and all sorts of different events. Um, I encourage you all to engage with the library after the talk. Um, the Hilo is part of um, the Cranesburg Arts Foundation. My name is Gina Grafos, and I'm the director of visual and literary infrastructure for the foundation. Uh, the foundation's mission is rooted in uh, activating all the arts in the St. St. Louis area and supporting regional artists, um, visual art, music, theater, dance, literary, all of the above. So welcome, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions after the talk. Um, and take it away. Thanks so much, Gina. We're really thrilled to be at the Hilo. I think we're recording there, Andy. Okay, I think we're here. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Jesse Cerruti. Uh, I'm a part of the board of Paul Art Space. Mike and I here are on the Paul Art Space side, and Evan and Stacey are, are artists here that uh, have the exhibition. And we. Uh, yeah, we've been, I've served as board chair, I've been kind of working with Paul Artspace since, what, 2016 maybe, about, about five years or so. So yeah, we've been, uh, done a lot of different things over the years and uh, this is pretty much our latest project. The other thing we have going on right now is we have an exhibit out at Lambert at, at the airport. If you ever uh, out there and you get a chance to go through the baggage claim area, we have an exhibit on view out there now too. So that's something else. In the main terminal. Right? Yes, and in the main <laughs> terminal. Yes, correct. Not at the Southwest Terminal. At the main terminal, baggage claim, you just kind of head down to the very end of all the baggage carousels, and we're right there, and we've got three artists, three writers, and we worked with uh, PSA as well to do some to do an exhibit out there, so we're really uh, happy to have that. And you can see some of our stuff on our slideshow here. This is a little bit of a retrospective Mike's put together for us, kind of some of the stuff we've done in the last couple of years, so... Um, yeah, so we're thrilled to have this conversation here with Evan and Stacy today. Um, we, yeah, so I'm going to ask them some questions. Mike's going to talk about Paul Art Space a little bit. We're going to have some time for Q&A here at the end. So um, think of your questions. I hope everybody got a chance to walk through the exhibit. It's been really fun to kind of work on this project over the last year or so uh, and see it in fruition. You know, it's been a lot of things were derailed by the pandemic, so now here we are doing new stuff, and it's great. And I'm happy to be maskless and speaking to you. We're all boosted up, so we're not breathing yeah. too many cooties on you. Three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think probably the first question to ask, and I think you know probably we can all speak to this a little bit, but I think we should let the audience know kind of how this exhibit came about and how we ended up here, as opposed to you know, Paul Art Space has been a um, uh, artist in residence program, a residency program. We had a house out in uh, North County that we used for the, since 2013, and we'd had a lot of artists in residence. And then with the pandemic and uh, just generally the the temperature and and you know the way things happen with the the support and the scene around St. Louis and different things, we've sort of moved away from that space. So we're working on more collaborative projects, and we've been really lucky to work with Cranesburg. Um, on different things, including Remix's mural out here, which you see in the slideshow and other things. That was a project we did two years ago. So we've enjoyed a great partnership with the Cranesburg and we're grateful for them. So yeah, can we, will you guys and maybe Mike talk about kind of how we got here today and, and, and how it all happened? Yeah. yeah, I mean, what you got, the Polar Space accepted us for the like, what was it, summer of 2020? Was it July? July, July 2020. Yeah, prime pandemic time. And we had filled out like all of the Paul Art Space like paperwork mm -hmm. and we're like in contact with you all. It was our first residency. We were super pumped. We were like so excited. <laughs> and and like your reputation too. I think we've had friends that have like been in the space and know you guys. And, uh, and then March hit and it was like everything sort of went black. <laughs> Which we were all like, we don't know what to do. And right. everybody was kind of in then. And then, then the Cranesburg call came out. So I we decided. So sorry to interrupt, but we decided that a residency was not in anybody's best. Like right. the, the house, the yeah. physical space, right. out due to the pandemic wasn't. Right. So let's let's go. Let's find a different direction to do something with this right. still. Right. Right. Well, yeah, and we, you know, as an organization, I think had wanted to really continue to provide support, and we were trying to figure out ways we could do that. Right. 
without hosting people, without having people in person. You know, we're very sensitive to any liabilities and other things being such a small organization. So. Uh, and this is the time where we were like that. washing groceries. Right. Too, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, we were like all in that yeah. The great yeah. unknown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, when the opportunity for the Cranesburg came up, we, we said maybe we can maybe this is a way we can Join. help yeah. you guys. Yeah. And then we joined up and sort of came up with an idea of like presenting work in mm -hmm. conjunction with you all. Right. Right. Yeah. And so then it then it allowed uh, in a kind of like organic fashion that was like expedited by a virus <laughs> it allowed this kind of you know it allowed this thing to sort of begin happening that uh, is where we find as an organization where we find ourselves today really kind of functioning as a facilitator and uh, as a support system to work with um, visual artists and writers and curators um, you know within the community which has always been a part of the mission of Paul Art Space from its beginning. Well, and it's always important, I think, for us to find a way to support our local artists and our community locally. You know, we we have prided ourselves on, and we've done different stuff internationally, but it's so nice to be able to really support the like local folks that are working on stuff. We have so many talented people in such a strong community here that we really want to always do that. So, we, that was certainly felt. But it's pretty great to to develop a show, um, and, and, and the partnership consisted of. Um, uh, studio regular studio visits with Jesse as as we developed our concepts and so that was just invaluable I think to to where it ended up. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun <laughs> for sure. And yeah, and it still is fun. Like it's great. You know, I'm I'm proud of the work we did together. You know, to do this. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, I think uh, generally speaking, you know, I want to talk to you guys a lot about. I want to ask you guys to talk because I want to tell you to talk about your practice and all the you know different stuff you did. So I think probably the first question or the you know the beginning of the conversation could be like how you know you guys are in collaboration, which is fairly unique. You're also romantic partners, life partners, all these things. So you know how how and at what point did you start sort of collaborating in, as artists, and how did you you know kind of transition to that and you know continue obviously continue your other life, you know, the rest of your life, right. but how are you, you know, so how did, how did it come about and when maybe did you realize that like, you know, maybe, maybe we're not, maybe we wanted to pursue this as a couple, right. you know. Do you want to go? You go. <laughs> yeah, like tell me. So we had a show, I had a show, I guess it wasn't a we yet, at uh, Forest Park Community College in 2017. Um, and I was doing a lot of work with like, lighting and these sort of miniature kind of like sacred spaces and i started i made like four or five of the pieces for the show and then i like wanted to like make the lighting more dynamic and so i was like oh i'll get into sort of like let's get into coding because you know that'll be easy and um realized like really quickly that I didn't have the skill that it like took and I bought a bunch of like random stuff on the internet and was like I'll just like plug this in and break some like blow out some breakers and it'll be fine. As one does. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> right. And That's then so you had mentioned you're you were you've always sort of been helpful and involved in always like my making. Mm -hmm. But then you were like, oh I took a class in coding. Because a class in coding, <laughs> because I'm a civil engineer, wherein we do not do coding. Right. But so for my engineering degree, I did I did a coding class, and so he was the the plugging in and was not working, and so right. we. Well, yeah. So you guys, you've been together a long time, and you've also you studied engineering and you studied art, right. and you kind of were doing your sort of separate right. things right. and figuring yourself out, and then. At some point, you realized you could help each other. Yeah, and I felt yeah, and I felt like with that show specifically too that like my name was on it, but Stacy was really involved quite a bit. And then I felt like I asked you, I said, "Hey, what if? What do you think about doing this together as opposed to me getting credit for this?" And you you're actually a part of this. So I, then, my response was, "Oh, I mean, I'm going to do it anyways. It, it doesn't matter. My name doesn't need to be on it." But then. We went on a trip to New York City, and we're walking, and I, I you know, being an engineering tech nerd, have my nose in the tour guide, right, reading all about it and, and missing the actual reality. 
But uh, so I had read about the um, Brooklyn Bridge was um, uh, conceived of and, and started by, um, I forget which, somebody, Mr. Roebling. And then Mr. Roebling died in an accident and his son took over. Uh, I think that was Washington Roebling. And then his son got uh, injured with the bends and was uh, confined to his apartment that overlooked the construction site. And his wife, Elizabeth, took over, taught herself all the calculus and took over the whole thing and finished the Brooklyn Bridge. But of course, you've never heard of Elizabeth Roebling. And there's a plaque on the bridge uh, that was put up in like the 1980s or something. And so I, you know, you know, that naturally irritated me. But then I was thinking, well, this is the same thing, right? If, if I'm doing the work, like my name ought to be on it. And so kind of in honor of Mrs. Roebling. I like to I'm think gonna... you don't remember his name, but you remember. <laughs> 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 it's like August or something. I don't yeah, some, some German. It doesn't matter. It was, it was, it was William or something. Like that. It was something German. <laughs> but, and then um, we've we've been partners for fourteen years now, and you um, you went to college later, but has all, have always been like tink like tinkering with art, and so I would come home from work, and you'd have done something new, and and are still you know emotionally attached to it, and asking me what I think, and you know I either didn't understand it or didn't like it, you know, and so there was a lot of like education on my part about what art is and, and what's good, and education on him, his part of maybe don't ask right away when when you're still emotionally attached to it. So like over the course of our relationship, I think we couldn't have been collaborators 10 years ago. We've done a lot of growth on how to um, criticize kindly and educatedly. Yeah, and I think- In both, yeah. both ways. And I think this show is like a, kind of a good example of like how we not only collaborated with you all but like it was like actually it felt like evenly like pace where we were sort of overlapping where I may do like a tech thing that may be more of Stacy's expertise and you would say oh that doesn't actually work aesthetically or like and so there's like a lot of more back and forth in a healthy way like with this show which was kind of yeah yeah when I started I was just the lights and you were concepts and build and right, everything right. in this we're getting more balance. Yeah. No, I mean, that, and that's kind of leads into the next question I was going to ask you, but also, yeah, like how, what maybe, and maybe I'm going to change it just a little bit, but, you know, what, what have you maybe learned from each other, like, as, as working together? You know, like, do you find that you've both, <laughs> <Nothing. sort> of, <laughs> you know, but do you find that you both, like, do you yeah. find that, you know, you can sort of get in more to conceptual sort of, you know, art, arty concepts or, you know, things that, yeah. that maybe Evan is learning, you know, in his program at school and things yeah. that, you know, kind of come home to you yeah. and make you think differently. Yeah, yes, I definitely think so. Um, you know, engineers are taught very rigidly. Uh, there's a right answer, and, and usually I didn't have it in school. But um, don't worry, I'm a better civil engineer now than I was a student. <laughs> but uh, but um, being married, partnered with an artist, and then watching him go through art school and learning about critiques and, and all the different, uh, you know, kind of the way of life of an artist is really just kind of opened my eyes to, you know, a much uh, broader, more colorful world than the, you know, black and white that I was raised in and, and educated in. And so it started by just a curiosity in, in like, well, these people really see mo more than I do. And, and still not seeing it, but right. seeing that there's a difference here. And then over time, uh, I'd like to say I, I can see a little bit more now. Yeah, and I think I think for me it's like it's actually happened this week where people are like, "Oh, you're like really into math," and it's really <laughs> funny because like when I started college, I had to take three courses to like just get into math, like college algebra. So like it like math, but like I'm kind of seen as like a more like my brain's more engineering based because of our collaboration than it is sort of like the sort of like typical artist like free thing, you know like. Which, there's part of that too, of like wanting to break down those, but uh, it's definitely more of like a mathematical, but I mean, this is like, 
we did with cardboard, but it's very calculated. And yeah. Very like, well, that's something I want to jump in if I can, because you said something earlier, um, Evan, about this, you know sacred spaces, and this right. is when you were talking about earlier work. Then, yeah. but and pardon the pun, but this kind of high-low, right, of, <laughs> of, of technology, yeah, right? yeah, of like yeah. cardboard yeah. to coding, yeah. or cardboard yeah. to yeah. LED screens, or right. you know, right, and I'm, and I'm wondering like. Is that representation of your minds coming together, or how? Do, I mean, I'm just oh, curious. That's interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, oh. <laughs> I think it's a really great question because, like, there is the high tech that no one can see. Like, I mean, you know, the the inside the installation, like, the lights are coded to match the colors of the thing, but then inside the boxes are just like Home Depot light bulbs. And then, like you use like Arduinos to do the sound, Arduino coding to do the sound, and then there's the cardboard, which is like a very frustrating material to work with, especially if you're like a perfectionist. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think to sort of answer your question, I think there's that sort of bound, the elevation of like it's an elevation of materials, and then an understanding too that like I think it's really easy when you get into technology to be like overcome by it. So like for 3D printing, for example, when someone sees like 3D printing for the first time, they're like, oh my goodness, you can 3D print that. <clears throat> but then it takes over and you lose the like concept or you lose the sort of ideas behind it. It's like, how can they, how can they function to serve the purpose of like what you're trying to say? Sure. And that's the, that's a constant like battle. Yeah. Right. You know, at least. Yeah. Well, I can see that like, you know, and being a visual artist and being somebody that is definitely less on the math side and less <laughs> on the technical side, you know, I can see how being partnered with someone who knows, who has right. his expertise can right. do this, right? You know, my partner is a sculptor and a mount maker and I'm a 2D person. I often turn it in for help with those kinds of things, you know, but so I can see how to me it makes total sense that it would like having an engineer in the house makes it easier yeah. to be an artist. But how does having an artist in the house make it, does it help you be an engineer? Does it, does it? Well, his work ethic is incredible, and the dishes and laundry are always done. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stereotypes that we don't fit in. Right. Because there's like, yeah. No, but I've definitely, in my work as a project manager now, um, and even before, but but I'm in a supervisory role, leadership role now, and and so it 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 helps me um, be so much better and more well-rounded at my at my job and, and look my job actually is to find new ways uh, of doing things and implement them for the state of Missouri and, uh, and, and so that the open-mindedness that I live in at home uh, and with our friend groups uh, then going to work you know because we've always done it that way is like a curse word in my book like you, should, you don't no one on my team gets to say that you know and so I think it's really just helped me um, be be a better, um, more inclusive um, engineer in terms of ideas and processes and things. It's interesting. I could see your your colleagues maybe maybe having a specific sort of response to that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Very, yeah. Right. Well, like they roll their eyes probably. But yeah. Right. I do have a, I do have a, I'm the the weird artist at work and I'm the weird engineer at home. So that's perfect. Right. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah, because that's you know kind of what. It, you know, I was going to ask you guys, like, you know, where do you guys practice as meat? But it seems like more and more, it's it's more of a gray area. Like mm -hmm. as you continue through yeah. project to project, right? right. I mean, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like this project maybe led you in in a place like to new places that maybe you hadn't been with your collaboration? For sure. We almost killed each other. Oh yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's very it was the other side. It was the other side that we almost did kill. It was a six day. It was a six day install. <laughs> And it was almost a solo show. And it could have gone, <laughs> this, is, this is the <laughs> joke. This is the joke. It, it was, yeah, whose solo show was it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> that was the, like, you could just put a tape line through the gallery. <laughs> right, right. But, like, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But we had, like, we had planned it really, like, really well really? because we knew that we had to build out. And, you know, thank you to uh, Gina and Katie for, like, being so like hospitable because like you all helped with the install and like we had we had a plan but our but our like like the time it took to do it was six days and we were planning for like 
two or three? It usually takes three times as yeah. long. I remember yeah. being in grad school and say, hey, you know, everything takes three times as long right. as you think it's right. going to be. Right. And, you know, I remember calling, I, I'll be home in two hours. <laughs> and, you know, it's really six hours. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> But I, yeah, I think that that was a big like learning thing, and then again the sort of like learning to work together and figuring out like where does the overlap happen, and then you know I think sometimes people get an idea of oh you guys like have it all together, and I think there's a lot of like there's a lot of times where we work separately together where it's like no I need to like do this thing by myself to figure it out, and then you need to do like. So the, I think, yeah, as far as like this whole like, thing. When to, who, to, who to trust on what? There's right. more of a gray area now, which makes that, is that much more difficult. But, right. you know, the electronics are not, not just my realm anymore, right. and the right. structure is not just your realm right. anymore. But, and so we've, I think we ended up doing it well, right. but it's taken a lot of work to, to you know, know when your opinion someone else's opinion is more important than that. And cardboard is like not meant for our show. Cardboard sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy this show because it's never happening again. We're going to have a big bonfire. I was right? going to ask like you, yeah, yes, definitely. I was going to ask you a little more about, about your collaboration and stuff, but it, I mean, it really does seem like you guys, you know, are, are getting to a point where it's, it's, you're able to sort of feed off of each other and bounce right. back. And even if sometimes it's nasty and sometimes it's gross, you have to like grapple with those right, realities, right, you know? Right, right. Um, and, and it's, it's, I don't know, I think it's it's inspiring, you know, to me to be someone who's, you know, also partnered with an artist, also has collaborated on different things, you know, I think, you know, I, I don't know, so, it's so interesting to just sort of see that and to really own it and to like take it together, you know, and say like, this is what we're doing and, you know, like, yeah, and who to trust and how do you make those decisions and how do you go through that stuff and yeah, do you flip coins sometimes or arm wrestle or whatever you know, do you know? Like, or yeah, who's, who's making yeah, dinner yeah, or who's yeah, cleaning out yeah, the cat yeah. litter box? Right, like, right. I'm gonna go to Urban Chestnut, I'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> like, we've made a decision on this, but that means you're doing the dishes, you know? Right, right. Um, yeah, for sure. So, but you guys were talking about the cardboard and it made me want to ask you about materials and yeah. how, you know, um, that was on my list of things to ask yeah. you, you know, is, is how do the materials come about? And I think specifically for this show, like working right. with cardboard and other things, like maybe you guys want to talk about materials. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, mm -hmm. I get really obsessed with materials and then sort of like see where they take me and then I think you, we were talking today about that, like how there's that kind of fun thing where you can like figure out a material and then like nerd out about it and then like see how it fits. And this, the original idea for this show is probably like two and a half, because COVID is so like, does everybody else have like the gap year? Mm -hmm. So it was like three years ago probably. I made this little mock-up of a cardboard box that was like, like life scale. So it was about like intended to be like eight feet tall. And the whole the whole idea, if you've ever read Calvin and Hobbes comic book, Calvin had a transmogrifier, and it was a cardboard box that like allowed him to transform into anything he wanted to. And there's quite a few sh like sh different strips that are dedicated to that. And I was like, what if, like, what if that existed for the viewer as an adult? Because Calvin and Hobbes inherently is sort of also like written for ch like children and adults, and then it, and it sort of evolved. So I made I made a piece like that at school, where I was like dealing with and the, and the box lit up and it had a motion sensor and it was like sort of torn up, and it was talking about like childhood trauma and like joy and like all this like kind of mixed stuff, and then coming into sort of. Like our proposal and what we had kind of talked about was like with COVID, like it, everything, and this is still like happening. Like we've been living through this going on two years, right? Like we're, we're, we've lived with this thing for so long and life hasn't stopped. Like that's the big, like, like life is continuing, continuing and there's the weight of the pandemic and all of the other things that are happening. And so it's like, how can we like give a sense of like, literal respite. I mean, that's what, when conversations with you, you we kept saying it, and you were like, sounds like the title of the show, and we're like, oh, duh. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, so then, and then cardboard was the material for it, right? Because this, like, and sort of we talk about that the statement that this, you know, this material was invented to sort of ship 
things, right? And so that's inherently a part of a system that like products mean stuff. And then like what's the most like anti-capitalist thing is the child playing with the box, not the, the like the object and comes yeah. in, right? And so playing on that idea and then leaving it, leaving it sort of open and like fresh. But then we, like there was a bunch of reiterations of this and originally it was gonna be like the cardboard boxes would deteriorate over time. And then the last one would be like sort of clean as you, you can go inside of it. But then it felt heavy handed and we were like, oh no, we'll just have like openings. And as the boxes get bigger and bigger, there'll be more openings. And then, and then the big thing with the show is that the light is inside the box. And then in the last one, the light's on the outside. And then with the sound, there's a, each individual sound in the boxes before the installation. And then as you walk in the installation, you're the sound, right? So you become this sort of thing. So there's like all these sort of like ideas that go into it, but then also, and I think something that we've worked on really hard is like, the idea stems from something that comes from us, like a very personal thing of like our own like childhood play or like creativity or whatever that comes with the box. But then leaving it open so that, you know, viewers can have their own sort of like interpretation of the thing. So leaving it open enough. So like we didn't put blankets in the installation, right? We left it like bare. I maintain that would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> or like we like we want that sort of audience viewer participation because we all come with our own stories. Right, and relationship to this like material. Well, cardboard's such a thing that is kind of such a blank slate, right? And especially right. in the context of thinking about being a child and imagining, you know, I remember when my mom got a new refrigerator when I was a kid, you know, and being like, wow, there's this whole huge box and I can like build a mansion for my cat, <laughs> the best you know, <laughs> in this cardboard box. And yeah. I, and, you know, and I think that, you know, yeah, it's really interesting to have something that you, you know, that is such a blank slate that you can apply so much to. And then how do you do that? And I think that the balance of sort right. of, you know, how much information do you give the right. viewer right. versus how little, you know? And, and you were talking about the sound and stuff and that makes me want to ask you, you know, specifically about some of that content and some of the yeah. information you chose to give and how you wanted, you know, and, and why you chose sort of what you chose and the thinking and process right. behind yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah, so the sound, that was the first time we've done sound. Mm -hmm. We're rather proud of ourselves. <laughs> you should be. It's not always easy to get into right, media. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, some of you all that went to art school may know of the Robert Morris piece, uh, the, sound, the Box of Its Own Making, which is literally, it's a wooden box that's very well made, but it has a sound part of it, and it's all the sounds of the box being made is the sound. So the in in each one of the boxes in the in the show here, they're all recorded sounds of. So like the first one is the use of like a crayon. So like thinking about like how younger or like a child would play with a box, and as they get bigger, so it's crayon. You have to help me here. It's a crayon marker, and then ripping of the cardboard, um, and then taping of the cardboard, and then the cutting of cardboard. So thinking about like how we use it as we get older, and then again, like at the last one, you're sort of the sound in whatever present, you know, whatever, however you are today or whenever you see the thing. So thinking about that, you know, as a component to this, like giving them a sort of life, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering about, um, in terms of, you know, this as the, the, the site and, and sort of the, you know, yeah. the, the site specific aspect. Yep. And was it, I mean, the room, the big yeah. box? Yeah. Like, at what point did this kind of. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, Evan is I'm not the rebellious one. Yeah, okay, let's we'll just be clear. <laughs> public spaces. Um, so we were accepted as uh, artists at the Cranesburg, and uh, we opted for this space. Uh, because it didn't have outside windows and, and our uh, light in the past and still here today, fe our work in the past and still here today features light and so um, we wanted a, a closed space. So then we come here to visit to kind of, you know, scope out the space unofficially and there was a door in it and I was like, oh, I wonder what this 
goes to, and Evan's like, don't touch it, don't touch it. And I was like, well, Meanwhile, there's, there's an exhibition happening with, like, beautiful <laughs> paintings. I can't remember the exhibition. Anyways, no I'm defending myself. On the door. <laughs> also, had it been locked, that would have been a sign that... Right, right, anyways, right. it wasn't. So, well, as a good engineer, you had to make sure the door functioned and... Yes, right, right, yes, right, 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 yes. Right, 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 right. Right, right. Right. <laughs> but I had to come in and assess the space, right. and there was a missing space, right. and I needed to... Um, anyway, so, uh, so I poked my head in, and then Evan, of course, was like, well, now you're in, you know. <laughs> and then we scoped it out. So we scoped it out. Sorry, Cranesburg. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so then, um, that came out of a... The, the sculptural, the miniature sculpture spaces that we made for our previous shows, like at the Sheldon, um, we had repeat questions of, are you ever gonna make this large enough for uh, people to go in? Right. And well, we didn't really have space for that or, or you know money for that, but um, here was a grand opportunity right. to do that. And so that kind of, um, that available closet right. helped shape the way the work ended up too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love that because it's, it does, it does a lot of things, of course, but one of the things that I really respond to in, your, in, the, in the work and the installation is it makes you very aware of interior and exterior. And I think that in a physical sense, as well as an intellectual kind of way, you know, right. and I think right. it's, uh, you know, I, I've, I wrote a little thing yeah. you know, kind of for yeah. this, but I, uh, when I knew this talk was happening, I kind of went back to it and something I just wrote and I want to, Read it. It's one sentence. The optimism of light, the potential of a threshold. Mm -hmm. And I think about that, and it's you know because it's like whether you're inside, whether you're outside, whether you're approaching it, whether you're exiting it. You know those things are very powerful, and they can really you know yeah. reverberate. Yeah. You know so. Yeah. And when you originally wrote that statement, you quoted a bachelor, I was like, oh, we can't stand each other. Yeah. <laughs> we get each other. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah, I think that's like the. The like the light component, what you're saying, like the potential, because that's the, the hopefully the idea is that when you look into that light, or when you open the door, or when you see inside the box, like you're not given information because like hopefully you can use your imagination, right? Like that you can sort of reignite that. It's like oh no, this is your interpretation of the thing. I don't need to, you don't need my interpretation of it, right? Um, and you know we've had people come in and be like, oh, does it mean this, this, and this? And it's like it can for you because like not that like it somehow encapsulates all meaning. Like don't get me wrong, it's a very specific thing, right? But hopefully it starts a conversation where it's like, oh, well, it could mean that for you, right? Like it could that potential. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's so much to think about with potential. And I think you know, looking at your work in the past and the different sorts of stuff you've done, you know, I think there's always that kind of you leave room for the viewer, you leave room for, for someone to sort of enter in and, and provide their own kind of narrative. And, and I, I think that that's always a great sort of way to communicate as an artist. You know, you, you're speaking to the world, right? You're not just making this in a vacuum, like this is about my own personal experience. You, know, you can infuse any, any little parts of that or any little bit of your own experience into that, and that's what makes it authentic and what makes it real. But to be able to allow someone else in to do their own thing right. is is and it can be tricky right yeah. yeah yeah and especially yeah like <laughs> yeah it's super tricky and i think also it's it's like intended for the times too like only you can only go in that space like with your inner circle like and it was very much intentional for because the time COVID. because of COVID. i mean we're that you can I mean, only enter that space. I mean, it's an intimate <laughs> space, and it, and it hopefully, hopefully, like, if if you can shut the, if you you know, if you're here tonight and you haven't shut the door afterwards, uh, some people do get claustrophobic. I understand that, but the door doesn't latch, so you're good on the safe mm -hmm. side of that. But like and the, the door, idea, and the doorknob turned out great. Yeah, the little doorknob, <laughs> the little key doorknob. Uh, but yeah, I think that like when you shut that door, it it just cuts all the sound out, right? It, it's that idea of getting out of this, you know, insanity that is now, right? Um, so yeah, there is that intentionality, and it's it's a hard thing. It's like a constant. I mean, we have been working on this for what nine months, I think, up until it's yeah, which is great for us because it allows for that time. Well, it's like, like real art time, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. like you're, you're right. grad school. You know? <laughs> <Right>. Next week. <laughs> 
But to have that time to actually suss out like what what are we trying to do for the people who are going to like experience this, yeah. right? And give well, is it something that you think that like continues in your work, or that you find is is always something that sort of you come back to that like you know you want to leave that room, you want to have that. So viewer, you know, like the viewer's important. Sure, I, I don't know if this quite answers the question, but one thing I do want to say about this work and, and our work, like our current trend in our work, our artwork, is talking about or making space for individual self-work. Because we can only do this collaboration as well as we can, because we've done a lot of our own self-work, our own dealing with, um, you know, the shenanigans of our childhood and, you know, brought on by ourselves or others. And so, and so we, in this work, we're, um, one angle you can take it is, is getting back to your inner child and, and being kind to them and, and understanding what they had to deal with and, and maybe you can let some of that go now. And so um, the what, what I think is magical about that, the show is you walk in in the first box as a, an adult or a, a larger person and then as you go through, you like in the process of boxes, you are the one shrinking Alice in Wonderland style, and so then the last one you get to be the kid in the refrigerator box again. Right. Right. I have no idea what your question was, but I think that's <laughs> that, that came up for me. And like, what y'all were yeah. talking yeah. about is that well, just, so that's what we want to say. That's our that's our message, kind of to the world right now, uh, based on our own experiences. Right. It's just the importance of of self work in whatever form that takes. Right. And I think to, I do remember questions. Spot <laughs> something, but I, I think, yeah, I think, I think there's like two, there's two parts of the, like the viewer thing. I think there's one part that says like we come from a very specific background, like history, et cetera. But hopefully, like, and I, we were having this conversation yesterday, like our work doesn't have a body in it. But the body is there because it's like the viewer's body, or who, like, when you when you're in there, and they kind of read as like boxes can be houses, can be spaces, and like you can enter in this thing. So we're talking about the figure or the body um, in a way. But hopefully, it engages the viewer to allow like that sort of engagement is something I'm super interested in, and like that interactivity like portion of it. We've had cases where people have actually damaged the work because it was too interact like it felt too interactive so there's like a there's a there's a line there that you cut this constantly moving but like i think both of what you're saying and it's like hopefully it allows for people to have a space where they can kind of think about these things and be like oh i hadn't thought about that but then allow them to be the sort of subject in a way right I mean, well that that's precisely why i was like this you know, from our perspective of running Paul Art Space and what that right. is meant to function as, you know, yeah. uh, it's certainly in step, you know, these, these are parallels. Right. And so I, I thought of like, yeah, this, this 70, 1970 ranch house out on this, yeah. you know, place in North County is kind of like your cardboard box. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, and I see that, I think, even like, you know, thinking about you know, your approach to work. Like, Evan was my student at Forest Park Community College about seven, eight years ago or whatever. And so, you know, even then, like when you were, you know, working on stuff, I think he always sort of tried to leave room for for that or for the yeah. other. And, yeah. and, and I think there's, you know, it's almost like there's two different approaches to making right. art. You know, it's like sometimes, you know, you think of the, you know, painter alone in his studio making his, you know, monumental paintings. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, so much yeah. of contemporary art is not that at all, right, you know, and, right, it's, and it's right. about these intersections right. we make. And I think, you know, for you two, like working as a collaboration, you know, you already have that intersection sort of there between right. the two of you. And it shows in the work and it shows in the, you know, concepts and how you develop and how you collaborate. And I think it, it allows for your more room in a way for the viewer and for the people that come approach it to sort of, you know, be able to enter in, you know, liter and in these boxes, I mean, almost, you know, like literally you're, you enter in. <laughs> you you know? the, so, so yeah, for the, those that ask, like, yeah. can you make it big? You're like, okay. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah, actually like it. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, jumping back to the material aspect, uh, you know, 
because of what you see when you walk into that space, it, it does create this this kind of accessibility. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't feel like you're uh, gonna knock over a you know 18th century you know <laughs> marble <laughs> bust and like oh gosh you know. But at the same time, as you're in that space and you see it and you kind of are, are experiencing it, you see the incredible purposeful thoughtfulness, you know, actions that were applied to the materials, yeah. right? So then you're like, yeah, there's, okay, I'm, you've got my attention here, you know? Yeah. So, well, absolutely, and with a material yeah. like cardboard that's so malleable and so, you know, dentally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you look at it wrong, right? I mean, there's, you know, I, I've worked with stuff like this. Yeah, you know, you can't even look at it without it falling apart, you know? <laughs> that was the, that was a line during the, like, install, too. It was like, the cardboard's the art, cardboard's the art, because it's, like, really yeah. hard to get your brain outside of that. <laughs> yeah, when we showed So even with me, that's, like, been working, you know, we've been working for this stuff, they're like, don't step on the cardboard. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we had back, like, we had packed up all our... Um, suppliers in cardboard boxes. Right. It's, it's just like uh, it's not a material you're careful with, right? And so we had all these. We had flat packed all, you know, having to pre-cut everything, so it was lying on the floor. It was so much. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I mean, do you see guys ever doing something where you, you you know, kind of let that more looseness? You know, I think something that's yeah. sort of characteristic of, of I'd this. I would say this is loose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, for, yeah, for the yeah, engineer. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is yeah. not right. I'm not the only one in this. Right. Yeah. You know, I know you right. guys are right. And you, and you definitely, I mean, even again, back in the day, like always were, you know, very uh, precise right. sort of craft based, right. you know, very right. intentional how you do that. And, you know, I think, you know, in your program in grad school, you know, there's a lot of right. weight and, and sort of things that are applied to that craftsmanship. Yeah. It's, you know, it's important to have it be precise and right. be sort of perfect, you know? Right. And like, what happens, you know, does the work fall apart right. if it's not perfect right. or, does, or does it stay together, yeah, you know? Yeah, and yeah. and, and maybe, yeah, maybe working with right. a material like this yeah. is important for your yeah. growth, like right. as it a- was, It was growth. I was in there, so before tonight, just as like a thing, I was in there with like a broom and a ladder and I was making sure the tape was like all still <laughs> like sticking because it's like slowly yeah. like- Oh well, yeah, humidity. Right. Apart, and yeah. humidity and, yeah. but I, I think that's a really good point because there's like, Parts of it that are falling out, and, and we were like, I don't tell them. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but they're like falling. They're like they're like one of the flaps in the top of the insulation is like falling, and it's slowly been like falling over the period of time that's been here. And like I think it's just taunting me right now. But there's something that like you even said that you were like, just let it like that. It feels like it's doing what it needs to be. It's a sort of doing it. Yeah. It's like that's what a cardboard box it's does. Box. It's no matter what, it's still going to be a box, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's like, oh, okay, okay, that actually is okay. And when when is it okay? Like, well, we never know the question, but like that idea is like again back to the serving the purpose of the actual content of the right. show. Right. And I think I think it just does that naturally. I mean, you turn on the air conditioning and or you turn on the heater and humidity changes and the cardboard just goes. <laughs> Like it just shifts, right? And you're like, no, oh, it's, it's, here it's, we go. it's something I talk about with my students all the time when, like, the technique or the technology exceeds the the concept mm -hmm. or sort of yeah. the content, yeah. Yeah. you know. Oh and it's God. like, that, what is that balance, you know? Right. And right. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know, what's next for the boxes? We know probably, yeah. but what's next for you guys? <laughs> like, what are you? Do you have more projects yeah. on the horizon? I know you're, you know, in the grad program. If you want to talk yeah. about that, or yeah. what, what are you guys? What's what's coming up for you guys? Sleep <laughs> and like downtime. Yeah. No. Uh, so I'm in my second year uh, at the MFA program at uh, SIUE in sculpture. So I'm going to be. Uh, I've got a year and a half left, which is like thesis slash thesis show, and you're going to be crushing it at work. You're going to be crushing it at work. Stacy's the project manager at uh, Department of Transportation, and that's been taking up a lot of your time. And we're going to be doing shows that hopefully we're going to try to get this show outside of St. Louis, mm -hmm. potentially with documentation and stuff like that to see because because it's cardboard you can buy cardboard anywhere, yeah. um, which is kind of hopefully the next steps for us is try to get a little bit outside of the like the region. Um, yeah. It's not that we don't like St. Louis. It's it could be a true pop up show with your box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Seven yeah, 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 right, right, right. right. <laughs> But yeah, I think that's the like the main focus. And yeah. well, and so I, get, I assume some of the next stuff we might see locally would be like a thesis exhibition or yeah. something like yeah. that as yeah. well. Yeah, that's the next one. And you're in the Varsity Art Show. 
Oh, yeah, I'm in the Varsity Art Show at Art St. Louis. Nice. So, Art St. Louis plug. Nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, there was something else, and I think I might have just lost it. Um, we've been doing really good so far. You've been doing great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good. But I guess, you know, we're, we're getting, yeah, we've been talking for quite a while here, and I want to give an opportunity if anybody has any questions for Evan and Stacey or for us about Paul Art Space or anything else. And I did want to say, like, as far as the future goes, you know, and, and as far as Paul Art Space goes, you know, we really consider ourselves an artist support organization. You know, we don't have a ton of resources, but we like to take the things we do and really try to help people and also help people that have we've worked with in the past and other sorts of things as well. So, you know, like, please consider yourselves, and yeah, I've told you this before, but I'm gonna tell you in front of these people that, you know, it's like, as you go to do those other things, like, let us know what we can do to support as an organization, you know? And I guess that leads me into maybe asking Mike to talk a little bit about the uh, future and sort of next year with Paul Art Space and where we've kind of been at and, and sort of what we're at and a little more maybe about Paul Art Space. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so Paul Art Space, uh, as we've established, you know, has sort of uh, shifted its model. Um, but uh, going forward and next year, uh, we do have an artist so our, our Stuttgart, our sister city exchange in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, we do have an artist from Germany coming. Um, and so we're super excited about that. And again, this is a shout out to our good friends uh, to Kranzberg um, Arts Foundation. And, and, and it's really, as Jesse said, you know, the resource of that property up there is not something that's really, I mean, there's still going to be the occasional bonfires because that's something I think that has always been near and dear to everyone's heart. And we got uh, a lot of cardboard to burn. <laughs> yeah, right, right, to come out there and, and do that. But um, the, the, the hosting of residents on that specific um, location is not uh, what will be going forward. So uh, for hosting this German artist that comes in for the Sister City program, uh, Paul Art Space will be you know, providing them a space here uh, downtown and then uh, the Cranesburgs are helping us in terms of finding some studio space. So it's it's that community, you know, it's community coming together. And we started, as Jesse said, in 2013. So we're not, you know, we're not too far from a decade. I'm kind of like, I can see it there, you know, and I don't know what that really means, you know, but, um, but I think that what, it, I guess one thing I do know that it means is that we are um, finding ways to sort of pivot and adjust and um, Jesse mentioned the show out, out at, uh, at the airport. That's a project that uh, you know, we, we, uh, we're really happy to get involved in because it does do everything that we talked about. There's, in that exhibition, there's uh, poets, there's a curator that puts it together, there's visual artists, um, and it gives that sort of uh, platform and exposure to the artist. And so that's an, another example of the work, you know, to the ongoing work. So I think that we as an organization and just sort of what we see <clears throat> for 2022 and, and going forward is, um, you know, being a part of the community, listening to the community, and finding ways in which we can, um, you know, bring support uh, forward. Right, and, and continue to support like our local artists and especially, you know, the community we've worked with in the past. You know, so many people that have come through our program have really gone on to do awesome, awesome things, you know, and we're really proud of the work that everyone's done, you know, and we hope that we've played like a little part in that, you know, and I think that we want to hope to be able to continue to offer opportunities for local artists, um, whatever that may be, you know, we don't always have all our resources as you can imagine, but we've, again, like Mike said, worked with awesome partners through the Cranesburg and, and uh, other spaces that, you know, we're kind of have potential things. So I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll still be around. We're here to help people, <laughs> you know, as much as we can and, and promote artwork. Like, you know, it's awesome to be able to do stuff like this. And it's really like imagining, you know, what we had talked about last summer and maybe, well, maybe we could do like a virtual studio visit or, a, you know, we could do these sorts of things. Like to be able to come here, and be in person and have you all come here and be able to talk about this stuff and engage with this stuff and, and support these folks that are like doing these things that contribute to our culture and our community like it's it's so important you know and and uh, I'm just I'm grateful to be able to have worked with you all and you know that we are able to see the fruits of our labor here with yeah. this exhibition and it's awesome and we can't do that without the support of Kranzberg and you guys like this is really a volunteer, like there's a, there's a lot of volunteer hours and energy that goes into these things. Um, 
and just like working with you all has been just such a joy because you actually care about like you do care about and like a back to the like sort of like giving back like we were talking about viewers and stuff it, it really feels like we were allowed to like do the things that we needed to do with some conversations but like just allowed to be free in the space and that that's a tribute to both you guys are our space and also again Gina and Katie who are just sitting back there and being awesome and being so cool and yeah. hiding behind <laughs> I particularly <laughs> wanted to, to follow up that with thanking Katie and Gina and the Cranesburg because they didn't have to let us use their closet their ancillary ancillary room right. um, that that really made the show and so yeah Absolutely. And it speaks to their flexibility and value of artists and their crazy ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have questions for us? Like, feel free to speak up. You know, we're a pretty small group. We can continue the conversation with you all. I have a question. Um, when I was first introduced to your work, uh, I think it was at Open Studios through Pam um, many, many years ago in your home. Yeah. And there were people in and out time and that's kind of when I first got to dive in yeah. and have a conversation but also engage the individual pieces that were sprinkled throughout your home. Uh, I couldn't help but notice the as you mentioned earlier the like um, the viewers inclination to touch. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if you've ever considered like something like this on a playground or as public art where you can yeah. just jump all over it so that right. there is that thing of like, I remember people like trying to put their fingers in different yeah. Yeah. Like parts of your work and I just right. curious about that. Like as something more um, permanent and yeah. intentional. Destructive. Yeah, can you get Moda to do that? <laughs> yeah, can you get Moda? Yeah. Well, I, yeah, the work that I'm doing at school right now, like, I'm thinking, like, thinking a lot about, like, not only miniature work, but, like, large scale, and then the sort of interactivity that you're talking about, and realizing that uh, people are, like, capable of, like, really destroying, like, metal <laughs> like <laughs> it's like like that they have the capacity I was like we were actually uh, Paula and I were having a conversation about this that it's a kind of amazing that like what people are the destruction that people are capable of but I think yeah like seeing like one of these being made out of like resin or something where they you could invite that sort of thing is really like like the potential that's really exciting um, yeah, no, I think it's something that's certainly on the horizon. I think, you know, like all things, that's a fun, it's like, you know, the funding comes, you're like, here's an idea that I have, and then people are like, well, people die on it, and you're like, uh, maybe. Yeah. You know, that's when you need somebody bigger than the Paul Art Space to partner with. <laughs> but it's certainly on the horizon. <laughs> yeah. It's certainly on the horizon of like thinking about like yeah the potential for public spaces and like allowing like multiple people to see it. Well, yeah, what would the potential be if you could, you know, just build your own space from the ground up? You know, like how like the possibilities are endless, right? right you right, know. Right. <laughs> yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Anybody else? I, I've almost died at the City Museum, just for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 How, yeah, I'm yeah. like, how many lawyers does City Museum? Yeah, we yeah, yeah. talk to their insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that writer, as soon as you walk in, buy a ticket, right. sign it that way. Yeah, 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 you get the wristband yeah. that says. If um, my head gets permanently trapped in a hole, <laughs> 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 I'm not going to sue you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you, you mentioned you had all these plans coming here and then the pandemic hit. Oh, yeah. do, do you know exactly what you were planning to do before? Would it have been with cardboard? What, did, uh, you know, how, how much did your plans change oh, great. When, you know, when the pandemic yeah. hit and you had to kind of reassess? Well, I think the, I mean, we would have been at the space, right? I mm -hmm. think that was a big... And we then, would have been at the Paul Art Space space. We right. would not have gone for this. Right, right. Yeah, I think I think 
I don't, I mean, you don't never know, but we would have been at that space and we would have been experimenting probably. And it may have been completely different. I think mm -hmm. that's sort of what's unique about this, that it shifted it. You know, a lot of people had this shift, right? Um, well, and I was so informed by the pandemic. As right, well. yeah. right. Absolutely. Um, Were you working on cardboard yeah, last year? Last, so I, yeah, I was working on cardboard. I made the idea for it before the pandemic, but never really like, I just made this little mock-up and it, you know, came back to it because I got interested in it again. So it could have gone completely different. I mean, you know, we would well, have been at that space and we would have been- And you would have probably there at the space, you would have been working alongside other residents. Right, and, you know, right. Would it could have, have changed that. the idea completely. Right. So it is pretty unique in that way that it, it really did shift everything. And, well, it, and, it, and it, it sort of forced us to make results as well. Right. Like, you right. know, like we were like found a, a outlet in this exhibition, you know, exhibition is totally different than a residency, you right. know, and, right. and Right. Yeah, it's right. a, you know, exhibition about results and right. putting it to the public, right. you know, yeah. as opposed to yeah. like working on your own, like isolated out in North <laughs> County, you know, yeah. doing your little right. thing in it, right. you know, in a, right. with a couple other artists, you yeah. know. No. But it is a great, it's a good question because it, it helps us to reflect back on like, oh, wow, like it really did shift everything. And we had to like rethink sort of everything. And I think, you know, that's probably all of us in this room, right? I mean. We probably have our all, all of our own stories of how everything sort of changed or how our lives changed when you know 20, uh, march of 2020 hit right like i think i, I mean I, I don't think i know you know i'm not grateful for all the whatnot that's gone on in the last year and a half but i'm grateful for for the ways it, it ended up in the show i like it i think it's a it's a cool angle on on um, like in the process of doing self work, we we could just focus on the narrative of our lives and the trauma in it, but that without the joy that also comes, you know, that we've been able to find um, and and choose to have in some cases, uh, that seems more honest to our experiences, is to not have beaten down boxes in there, but but to have it be joyful if it needs to be or safe if it needs to be or whatever mm -hmm. the viewer needs it to be. Well and having something to I mean yeah like I said it you know a little bit but to force the results a little bit and to you know it's like you okay here's this idea let's move through it and get to the end right, of it and right. then see what that means see what that means for the next steps, the yeah. next project in the future yeah. and all that you know I mean it to me you know an exhibition and I I you know admittedly that's you know how I make my living is doing exhibitions but you know we like that is such a way that you can work as an art you know you have a deadline you have something you're driving to you're pushing toward you know and to me it was a natural way to sort of say like how can we support you guys right, right. you know like let's let's just do this project right. you know let's right. let's sort of force it to come to fruition right. and work all the way through every right. step and then see what the end results are yeah absolutely yeah I mean you put like you said the exhibitions I mean that's a you're exporting into the world <laughs> pandemic hits everyone turns inward you know yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. and, it, and it feels like you know we all have kind of like navigated that and how we do but uh, sort of arriving at what you all arrived at um, you know it, it does it's that point for kind of that communion with yourselves uh, and you've created a space for that to occur for others you know right and, and uh, so yeah yeah anybody else have anything Katie you have yeah I have a <laughs> like both materialistically but also in terms of your concept because I know personally like my view of the cardboard box has changed a bit over the course of the pandemic yeah. specifically with um, a certain online yeah yeah we got to talk about the, the yeah. yeah the elephant in the room right yeah I was just curious how that yeah. impacted you in your process right I think there was a conversation. I was a conversation I was having with a professor of mine, and as we were like talking about this, they were like, "Oh, you know that someone's going to bring up Amazon, right?" <laughs> and 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 like as an artist, you're like, "No, <laughs> right?" But I think you know, like the pre the previous week before we have it sort of answers your question. I don't think. We were certainly thinking of like consumerism in the sense of like 
back to the, the childhood, the child choosing the box over the thing, right? Like that's certainly like a part of this sort of, this is, that's the catalyst for this whole thing in one way. And so it's, the, it's like the ultimate rebellious act in the sort of, especially American, like culture of like Amazon and these like big companies. But I think it's also like, you know, there's a couple things. One, it's money because like it's easier to build an installation out of cardboard than it is out of drywall versus acrylic. And then the other like answer is that we used a lot of like acrylic and non sort of like recyclable materials before. And this was a sort of like, I wouldn't say it was like a hundred percent, but it was like, oh, we can actually sort of recycle these materials as opposed to like store these sculptures in the basement and then eventually put them in a dumpster. Well, and even just the investment made in that, you know? Like, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's sort of like a multifaceted. And, and also it's kind of, yeah, the cardboard box clearly says, you know, buy it online in this day and age. Uh, but we kind of chose, we thought about it and, and chose to do it anyways. Right. You know, our, our, our message and, and what we're thinking about and what anybody can think about uh, is still um, fine. There was something else. <coughs> So we kind of thought about it, but did it anyways. No. But it's, it is, it's, it's a part of it. You have to like, I think it's a great question because it is, you're like, yeah, this is like the world, you know, I got a package today. It was like, it wasn't cardboard because it seems like they're switching. It's like, that. Ah. But that's also about like what the viewer takes away from it too, right. you know, like if you're going to show up and think like, oh, this is like, God. this is more boxes than I bought for this holiday season, you know, like you could feel the impact of it, you know, sure. cardboard is such a something that's yeah. sort of loaded for us in many right. ways, you know, right. I, yeah. I, but then it, it is kind of does feel a little subversive to take the thing that's the trashed part mm -hmm. and put it in a white gallery frequented by fancy people like yourselves. Mm -hmm. Right, you say that as you gesture towards the words high-low on the <laughs> thing, right? I mean, it's the same, it comes back right. to that, right? So it's oh, even... We did do that. <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, that I think about too is like, it's, it's, it's a disruption, right? Mm -hmm. By doing that, you know, just that gesture of taking something that was like mm -hmm. low-tech and... Right. But you work with low-tech and high-tech and I'm wondering like, what happens if you flip them and what happens if the... The high tech right now that's kind of concealed becomes front and center, mm -hmm. and then somehow what's driving that high tech is like duct tape and cardboard, and, you know? Right. Like I don't know. Well, yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a big fan of Michelle Gondry, right? You know, he's a director that makes these films and does these really like you know analog right. sort of right. high yes. special yes. effects, yeah. you know? And yeah. like I think that that you know I I'm, I love. I love the idea of just right. something you're code everything's coded and you know you got like raspberry <laughs> pie in the background or whatever and then yeah it's like but yeah. it's actually like looks like it's all made of carpet like that's yeah. brilliant you know yeah. it's really and there's something I think really of our moment like technologically and something mm -hmm. really human about that that we right. can relate right. to. Right. 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 Anybody else have questions for us? We got a little time or we can just all have another glass of wine and say hello mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah, <laughs> and we're happy to talk like one on one. Thank you. Oh.